I'm seeing yes. Okay, sounds good. Um, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Carol Prest. I'm the Registrar and Executive Director of BC Registries and Online Services and um, uh, in the Ministry of Citizen Services in British Columbia. And I'll give, turn it over to Dwayne to introduce himself. I'm Dwayne Gordon, uh, the Director of Digital Delivery at uh, BC Registries and Online Services. Um, where I work with Carol and uh, org book that you'll be seeing a lot of today is uh, under my uh, portfolio. Thank you. So uh, we are delighted here uh, to be here today. So thank you so much for the invitation and the opportunity to present. Um, we are um, uh, are very interested in your in, in any feedback you have. Um, so uh, please put any questions in the uh, the Q and A section, and uh, and we'll um, we'll get started. So um, we're here today uh, to talk about uh, Orgbook. Um, and we're, so we're gonna explain a little bit about what it is and um, why it's different and why it's absolutely foundational to digital trust. And technology has allowed us to, um, to learn and grow in, um, in creating bit, um, more improved uh, trusted interactions in the digital realm. So we're going to talk about benefits and impacts and how we have developed it. And, um, you know, uh, ideally, we would love to see you um, uh, engage and take advantage of this. And we're very happy to uh, to be part of any conversation you want to you want to have on this. Uh, next slide. Thank you. So Orgbook is um, uh, is a. Um, uh, it's orgbook.gov.bc.ca. It's a public facing web service. And uh, you can search for any company, proprietorship, partnership that is part of the BC corporate registry. So there are over 1.4 million active legal BC entities um, on, on Orgbook. And there are updates every week. So it um, has a notification service and it's almost real time updates to the, to the web service. It's available for anyone to use. Um, um, either through the, the web service or as an API. Next slide, please, Dwayne. So um, Orgbook, it provides trust in the digital realm. And the reason it does that is because the data is cryptographically encoded in the web service. So there's opportunities for any person in the public or private sector to prove data and that they can trust it. It's secure, trusted, and almost real time. So anyone can prove whether a corporate entity, BC, entity in British Columbia is active and that has met the requirements under law, BC laws to operate. So um, people can feel confident that the information is true. Um, and this is important for anti-money laundering initiatives, um, for legal and business lookups, for contract law, um, really provides provable origins of the resources and improves government transparency and streamlines government processes. So again, open and trusted data. Next slide, please. Um, so um, why does Orgbook meet these better than a normal database driven website? And I will just turn to the next slide. <laughs> um, and this is really because of verifiable credentials. This new approach provides a way to prove or verify that a credential is true. Next slide, please. So a credential is any piece of document that is issued by a, a, some kind of an authority for that details qualifications, competence, or authority. So this could be your passport, it could be your uh, your driver's license, it could be your uh, your graduation certificates or university degrees. These pieces of proof, though, can be compromised. And uh, you know, I'm sure we've all heard stories about people who have had their identity stolen, or that they there has been misrepresentation of university degrees, or in my case, the uh, incorporation certificates in registries. Next slide, please. So, verifiable credentials are the digital versions of the credentials you already know, but with that extra security to build trust and confidence. So. The, and the reason for this trust is that these credentials are cryptographically encoded using blockchain technology. So even when you are online and there is 
um, and you're looking for a way to build a trusted inter to a in interaction between two in individuals and you need to share and trust information digitally, you can do that through, these, through, through this verifiable credential. Next slide, please. So what makes verifiable credentials different is that they're, um, you can prove that they are authentic um, so that the data isn't, hasn't um, been altered or changed in any way. You can prove who issued that verifiable credential without actually contacting the issuer. Um, it empowers the holders so that they can share a verified viable credentials that are needed for a particular situation. For example, if I'm a corporation and I want to share that I'm a director of a company, but I don't want to share my shareholder information or other parts of the corporate entity, I can do that in a way that, um, that allows, gives me control over sharing that information. It's flexible, it's simple to use, and it builds that consistent user experience that, and, and, and that builds confidence, familiarity. And ultimately, the, the benefits is that this is um, everything that we have done through Orgbook and verifiable credentials are open source technology using global standards. So that, me that means that both public and private sector can take full advantage of verifiable credentials today. Next slide, please. So um, Orgbook um, demonstrates where the, there's a practical potential for new important digital trust technologies and, um, and Orgbook is just the first. There are many use cases and you're gonna hear, um, Dwayne, I'm gonna turn it over to Dwayne who's gonna talk a little bit about some of the work that's underway to create these, these and improve the way that we interact online. Great, I'd love to, thank you, Carol. Yeah, so some uh, interesting tidbits. Um, yeah, so here are some features that uh, we can highlight about Orgbook, uh, about the Orgbook service. So um, it is a web service that is providing transparency so that uh, anyone that can view, uh, anyone can view secure and trusted data about a corporation. Uh, a user can easily see and monitor if a credential has been revoked or, or if a corporation dissolves. Um, corporate information, well, it's considered to be public data uh, and us making it easily accessible uh, provides permit license issuers just greater insight into the corporations and their jurisdictions. So Orgbook leverages uh, con and contributes to, and it's built on open source technology. Uh, it's continually maturing uh, and evolving, uh, and it's peer reviewed and follows uh, the standards that have already been set in that uh, in that framework. So we're still in the early days, uh, but uh, as we develop and grow Orgbook, we realize that we are utilizing basically a limited portion of uh, a verifiable credentials potential. So um, the, the foundation of Orgbook, it's scalable and adaptable, as I mentioned before, and we're discovering new and exciting possibilities uh, as issuers are onboarding. Uh, to date, uh, we have several new partners, uh, including uh, the CRA, the Canada Revenue, uh, Canada Revenue Agency business number, um, uh, Cannabis, uh, by BC, uh, just last week had onboarded onto Orgbook, um, and that list is continually expanding. And as uh, Carol mentioned earlier, uh, legal the legal community has been using it for their legal lookups um, since we uh, provided it. Um, one of the most exciting things that we're working on right now is the business banking credential project. So I just want to walk you through a use case that is uh, currently in development. Um, it is the business banking uh, credential project. Uh, BC is collaborating with the federal government, uh, ICED and Alberta, to create a verifiable credential for businesses. Um, there are a couple of phases. Uh, we have completed phase one and we were able to prove that the interoperab interoperability requirements uh, so that verifiable credentials can be shared between two or more parties. Um, we are now into phase two, uh, which has us engaging in five uh, with five Canadian banks and an Alberta bank. Uh, and we're creating a proof of concept that will allow us to demonstrate that businesses can digitally interact online to um, well, that allows them to open bank accounts uh, and apply for bank loans uh, and do it all online in the digital realm. So in consideration, uh, sorry, in conversations uh, with uh, the large banks in Canada, uh, they are currently able to do roughly 10 percent 
of online transactions that are required to allow a business to open a business account. Uh, so given the work that we are doing uh, in allowing uh, the use of verifi verifiable trusted credentials, um, they anticipate uh, that they should be able to move up to about 80% for business online transactions, which is a huge savings in terms of business time um, and ease of access. Uh, so creating the transparency and trust uh, that the online world has really not been able to uh, keep up with as technology and uh, ease of access have advanced over the past decade. Um, and this is the work that we are doing. Uh, next slide. Uh, beneficial ownership. Um, so this is a, an international commitment. Um, and Canada is also committed to meeting the requirements uh, to meeting uh, to meet beneficial ownership. Uh, beneficial ownership is defined as a natural person who owns, controls, or profits from a corporate entity. Um, this initiative was a result of the Panama Papers and Bahama Leaks focused on money laundering and tax evasion issues. Uh, it demonstrated that corporate structures could indeed, uh, uh, sorry, corporate structures and entities could. Uh, be used for illicit purposes. So the bottom line is BC, uh, uh, we have the Cullen Commission that is currently in progress and we anticipate uh, we'll make recommendations around money laundering and tax evasion with a strong commitment to beneficial ownership and creating a registry uh, for beneficial ownership. So BC is engaged uh, in the federal, provincial and territorial discussions across Canada. Uh, and BC has initiated both a white paper and public consultation that was completed uh, in spring of 2020. Um, as well, the federal and Quebec governments also completed similar consultations, uh, and I know they're actively moving uh, the same initiative forward. Um, we are focused on improving corporate transparency uh, through greater assurance around who is behind corporate structures, and that corporate structure is uh, and that, that the, the corporate structure is truly a legal entity and is authorized to do business in their jurisdiction, uh, which is what BC is moving towards. Uh, so the verifiable credential ecosystem. So or Orgbook really, it, it's the start. Um, we are looking at verifi uh, creating verifiable credentials, not only for corporate structures, but uh, in B BC, we are also looking at verifi verifiable credentials uh, for an individual. Um, that will allow us as citizens of Canada to interact uh, in an online world in a much more secure and straightforward way. Um, we are continuing to work with ICED in Alberta uh, in that verifiable credential ecosystem, but we have uh, opportunities to onboard other issues of, uh, and permits and licenses. As I, I mentioned a few slides ago uh, with cannabis uh, CRA and by BC, but we're also in active discussions uh, with other provincial issuers of permits and licenses. And what we anticipate is that with Orgbook, you could have a completely transparent web service that profiles all of an organization's credentials. Um, do, do they have their health operating permit? Do they have their water lot licenses, their greenhouse gas certificates, so on? Um, so, so really the opportunity to create a, a very transparent approach to how a business is operating in, in the jurisdiction, it's it's really, it's on the horizon um, that anybody will be able to, to see that information. Um, and we want that ecosystem to grow. Uh, we are committed to that. Um, and we are looking to continue to build out and improve uh, the transparency of of the corporate structures that up until now have been allowed to operate behind a curtain. Um, so scalable, open, and growing. So that 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 that's really our mantra. Um, our open standards technology is expanding uh, with the issuers of licenses, permits, and origins. Um, we are finalizing the what we are calling a uh, an issuer kit and a verifier kit. Uh, so people and partners will be able to access these servers, uh, services or uh, allow them to become an issuer or verifier in a straightforward and very streamlined way. Um, it, it is easy for an organization to showcase their services on Orgbook, uh, which is a public facing service and it just allows greater transparency across the board. 
Um, a recent example is our uh, within the BC, um, one of our ministries, uh, EMPR, uh, that's responsible for mines. Um, they were able to collaborate with us, and and they 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 helped expand that ecosystem. Uh, and they are going to be issuing credentials to track and verify the origins of mined minerals, uh, such as gold and silver, uh, that's mined here in BC. So we are seeing success across the board uh, with Orgbook. Um, so as we were trying to build the product and the service um, and uh, to create greater assurance in the digital realm, um, if you go to orgbook.gov.bc.ca, uh, you can currently see it in action. Um, so I, I invite you to please check it out. Uh, we have also done some work to provide additional details around um, the open source technology that we use uh, and the type of technology that is being used. Um, we are uh, here for conversations as well, uh, both Carol and I. Uh, so please reach out if you have any questions. Uh, do not hesitate. Uh, we are uh, excited about this, and uh, we'd love to talk about verifiable credentials in Orgbook as much as we can. Um, that's it for my slides. I, I do want to thank you for everyone for who showed up and came out. Um, uh, Carol? Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you want so. To so, so um, just uh, if there's any questions, um, we, you know, we we deliberately wanted a little bit of time in case uh, someone wanted to ask something. So, uh, uh, you know, that's the end of our formal presentation. Uh, but if there's something that you want to ask or something that you want to chat about, we'd be happy to to have that conversation. So um, let me give you <laughs> then um, an, another example of something that we're using uh, for a use case. Um, the Law Society of BC is looking to leverage the technology um, under underneath Orgbook um, to create a verifiable credential of lawyers operating in British Columbia. So there is a uh, you know a some some real effort being um, being undertaken in trying to uh, trying to create a way for um, uh, proving that a lawyer is um, is uh, meets the requirements of the the law society. They've you know they've passed the bar. They've met all of their requirements, and um, and they will um, eventually in the next little while be able to hold the, their credentials in likely a digital wallet and prove that they have everything that they need in order to um, in order to do to do business in British Columbia. So there's there's many uh, use different use cases that um, as we as we talk with um, people and individuals and um, other uh, governments around uh, the, the uh, ability to leverage technology in a way to create trust in the in the digital realm this you know in in an and and you know underpinning it this is all about open data and the opportunity to share information and in a trusted and secure way so it's a it's a very um it's a very exciting time and i would say that uh we have um you know we're we're, we're looking to um to continue to expand as Dwayne said we're we're meeting with um working with the federal government and alberta um there are uh, other conversations happening across Canada, and um, and and really um, um, l trying to leverage ways to improve trust and um, and create a transparent uh, a transparent uh, registry. Okay. I'm not seeing any questions pop up in the. Uh chat or okay yeah. so um uh that's that's uh our that's our presentation if there's no questions you know um um if you would prefer to um 
to reach out to us uh, uh, separately. Um, Dwayne, do you want to put up our, our okay. email addresses again? Just, just heading yeah. back there. Terrific. Okay. Um, so Dwayne and I are available if you would love to chat or have a conversation about what anything that we've uh, talked about here today. And uh, look forward to... Um, to hearing, um, hearing from anyone. So thank you.